We're now in another section of our AutoCAD Blocks and Dynamic Blocks course. We're going to be looking at using Dynamic Blocks in this particular video. And as usual, if you look at the top of the screen, we've got 06 using Dynamic Blocks complete open while we're working through the video. If you want to use the drawing to keep up with the video, you're going to go to your working files and look for 06 using Dynamic Blocks .dwg. So we've got a drawing here, two plans of two floors of a house. So you've got the ground floor here and the first floor here. So what we're going to look at is how dynamic blocks can be used in this drawing to make us more efficient, more effective, more productive, and at the end of the day, more profitable. Because we're working quicker, we can get things done quicker, we can get jobs out quicker. So we're going to look at the ground floor area over here. You can see where that table is with the chairs. We're going to zoom in on that area there and pan upwards a little bit like so. Now I want you to be able to see the table and the chairs there, but also window number three here. Now both of these are dynamic blocks that are already in the drawing. And then what we're going to do in a minute, once we've looked at these two, is we're going to place two dynamic blocks into the drawing that as we work through this section, you'll be shown how to create. If I click on window number three, as I hover over it, can you see, even before I click, it's telling me it's a block. So if I click on it now, you'll see that various grips appear, not just the regular block grips either. We've got lots of pale blue ones, as well as the regular block grip, which is right there. Now, let's zoom in a bit closer and pan up a bit more. I've got a grip there, which aligns the block to the object. I've got a grip there, which drags to adjust the window width. I've got another grip there which drags to adjust the window width. This grip here is actually just the regular insertion point for the dynamic block. Now, if I click there, you'll see that that window was three feet. As I drag now, because it's a dynamic block, I can use distance and increments actions built into the dynamic block to make the window bigger. So as I drag this way, once I get to a certain limit though, I can only make it six feet wide. Can you see that? So as I go along, it's six feet wide. So if I click there now, I've got a much bigger window. I'll just hit Escape there to deselect and zoom out slightly. So that's one dynamic block. Let's have a look at the table and chairs. Now, I'm going to make this very big on the screen. You don't have to. So if I click here on this block, again, hover over it. It's a block reference on the layer of furniture. So I click there like that. Again, there's the regular grip for the block. I've got these length grips that I can click on. And as I drag, I can make the table longer, but look what happens to the chairs. So I'm using a distance parameter and action in that dynamic block, as well as what they call a visibility state parameter and action. So the visibility state is obviously giving me more chairs as the table gets longer. So you can see how these dynamic blocks are extremely useful because I don't have to keep placing different blocks in the drawing. It's all part of one block. I'm just going to double click on the wheel now to zoom extents. And as you can see, we've got the upper floor here. I'm going to zoom in on the small bathroom here, like so. And also on my layers here, make sure you're in the home tab on the ribbon, layer pull down. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the appliances layer here. Now appliances is there. I'll click there. That's now the current layer. I'm just going to hover over this block here. And that tells me that that toilet block there is on the appliances layer. And hopefully the bath is too. Yep, bathtub is as well. So the blocks that I'm going to insert next are going to be on the appliances layer. Now all I'm going to do is insert a block. Now the good thing is on the home tab, I've got the block panel. And I can click on insert there like so. And there's my insert block dialog box. Now I'm going to drag this quite a way up the screen. The reason being... We've got quite a long list of blocks to look at, and I don't want them going off the bottom of the screen. So you can see we've got lots of different blocks in here. I want the basin dynamic, that one there. I'm going to insert a basin into the bathroom. So there's my basin there. Little lightning symbol indicates it's a dynamic block. Insertion point I'm going to specify on the screen. Scale will be one. It's a uniform scale. We don't want it scaling in different scale factors in the X and Y direction. Rotation we're going to leave at zero. Because if you look at the preview, that's the angle we want it at anyway. I'm not going to explode it, so explode should be unticked, and I click on OK. As I bring the block in now, and I click there, like so, I'm just going to place it anywhere in the bathroom. 
and you can see the block has come in on the appliances layer because it was originally created on layer zero. I'm now going to select the block and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. So I'm going to use the move command over here and then I'm going to pick a base point right here. That midpoint snap there. So I'm moving it like that. Zoom out slightly and I want to place it on the midpoint of that wall, that back wall. Now to do that, I need to use an object snap that you may have not used before. So I'm going to do a shift and a right click. And I want this one here, mid between two points. And I just pick the two points, endpoint snap, endpoint snap, and it puts it in between those two points. So there's my dynamic basin in place. Now if I click on that, you'll see there's a grip there, a grip there, and a grip there. Now this is my selection grip, selecting different visibility states. So I could have a side view of the basin, doesn't look quite right. I could also have a front view of the basin, doesn't look quite right. They would look correct on elevations though. I need the plan view though. As you can see there, there's the plan view all set up. I hit escape to deselect. I'm going to zoom out slightly now and zoom into the open doorway of the bathroom. Change my layer here to doors, like so. And again, I'm going to go to insert block. There's the insert box again. Click on the fly out and I want door dynamic this time. Again, specify on screen, scale as is, rotation as is, explode unticked, click on OK. And there's my door there. I'm just going to drop it there and click because I'm going to use the move command again. Now, the reason I do that is sometimes you get these little alignment parameters on dynamic blocks. And on fiddly little walls like this, sometimes it will go to the wrong place. So you'll end up with a door going through a wall maybe or facing the wrong way. If it was a thicker wall, I'd probably just drop the door straight into the door opening. In this case, it's a little bit fiddly. So what we do is we select the door, go to the move command here on the modify panel. I'm going to use that endpoint snap there to that endpoint snap there. Look, you can see how fiddly that is with the grips, right? So I drop that there. I'll zoom in a bit. Click on the door. Again, it's got that distance parameter thing going on. So if I click there and drag, one of those increments goes exactly to the door opening. Nice thing is I've got a flip parameter so I can flip the door if I want to. Obviously, you might do it that way. That acts as a nice natural barrier to the bathtub there. So you might put the door in that direction instead. Again, up to you. Depends on the architectural design. So as you can see, dynamic blocks are very quick and very effective. I'm just going to do a zoom extents there. What you'll see in the next few exercises is how to create some of those dynamic blocks, such as the basin and the door that we've already used.